This is a meeting of the Devon's Jurisdiction Framework Committee. Today is November 13th, 2024. My name is Victor Normand. I will chair this meeting. I will now call the roll. Janice Livingston. Here. Robert Pontrian. Here. Rich Maiori. Here. Ann Nason. Ryan Sawyer. Here. Logan Breeze. Here. Ryan Hildebrand. Here. Bill Marshall. Here. Neil Angus. Here. John Catter. Here. Odile Smith. Christian Cohen. Ryan McDivitt. Here. Okay. Uh, we have a quorum. We are in order. Uh, the first thing I'd like to do, there are a few uh, new members and alternate members to this committee, and I'd like to uh, uh, formally bring them into the committee, as is our custom. Uh, I'll start with uh, Brian Hildebrand. Brian, you just want to tell us how you got here, and uh, we'll take a vote on including you in our committee. Uh, goodwill and voted me in for my first term and uh, it's been fantastic. Uh, I have big shoes to fill from Brian Sawyer over here. He's been uh, very helpful and uh, he, uh, in essence, gave me an overview of what's been going on here. And it's a topic I'm very interested in. And there are three select board members in Shirley and you drew the short straw and that is... Uh, uh, in theory, <laughs> yes, but uh, I was grateful. Uh, Great. It's good to hear. It's good to hear that. Is there a motion to accept uh, Brian onto the committee? So moved. Second. Second by Robert Pontria. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed say nay. Without objection, Brian is a member of the committee. Now, the next person is a proposed alternate member. Uh, Odile Smith is not often able to attend our meetings, so she communicated with me and Janice uh, recently and offered uh, Ryan McDivitt to be her alternate member when she is not able to attend. So, Brian, would you uh, tell us uh, how you got here? Sure, and, and thanks for extending the invitation today. Uh, Ryan McDivitt joined Bristol Myers Squibb a little less than Three months ago, so fairly new. I manage our local government affairs for the East Coast of the United States. Um, we we have obviously a big presence in in Devons, um, as well as as well as in in Cambridge Crossing, closer closer to, to Boston. But Devons a big manufacturing um, site for us, and uh, looking forward to getting involved. Odile had asked if I could step in here to fill in when she's not able, and looking forward to to helping in that capacity. Okay, that's great to hear. Where are you posted? Ryan, I'm actually based in New Jersey. That's that's where BMS is headquartered is. But I'm up in okay. Massachusetts often. Was there uh, two weeks ago? Okay, okay. Uh, is there a motion to accept Ryan McDivitt uh, to the committee? So moved. Seconded. Rich, seconded by Janice. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed say nay. Without objection, uh, Ryan is admitted to the committee. Congratulations, Ryan. Uh, we also, I don't think we formally accepted uh, Jim Geller. Do we, and I'm not sure we took a vote. Uh, Jim is not here to announce himself. Oh, yes. Okay. Jim, would you tell us how you got here? Uh, long time Devons residents moved in to Devons in 2005. Uh, been involved off and on with affairs at Devons. Want to be able to support John. Very good. And also, I, I'll add that uh, since he's come on board, Jim has been uh, working on the working group uh, and uh, been a, a very uh, active contributing member of that group. Okay, is there a motion to accept Jim Geller to the committee? So moved. Second. Yeah, second by Rich Mayori. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed say nay. Without objection, Jim, you're on the committee. Okay, and now on to the agenda. Uh, we have uh, minutes for our meeting of October 9th. Any comments? I had none. 
I just have one uh, under old business. There's one section under old business that I'm not sure what that is referring to. Is you have it, Janice? Could you read it out? It says uh, it, it says um, the one stop application under old business. A copy of the grant application was in the packet. It's a really comprehensive document. Representative Senda's office should be able to make it a decision, make a decision in a week or two. So I'm not sure who wrote, who was saying it's a really comprehensive document. Um, we know that the copy of the grant was in the, uh, you know, packet. So. Okay. Do you, uh, you want to have that elaborated a little bit more as far as like who said what? Uh, I, I don't think it. Is there any consequence? Does someone recall something that really should be included there? Mr. Chair, I think I was speaking on that to give an update on the grant. So I would propose we keep the obviously the first two sentences because it was in the packet and it was comprehensive uh, document. I would move to just strike the representative Senate's office. That, that sentence doesn't make any sense. Okay. So I just right. move to, to strike that. Okay, I'll second that. All right, good. Is there a motion to approve the minutes as amended? So moved. Second. There is a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed say nay. I'm going to abstain just so I wasn't here for the, so noted. For the meeting and the discussion. So my apologies. All right. Where I'll you have were that. well represented at the meeting. All right. I'll Appreciate have that it. second line uh, removed um, as amended. All right. The minutes are approved as amended. So uh, the town of Shirley is taking minutes for this meeting. And just uh, so you, I don't think it's necessary when we get down to the town reports, if the town reports, or, or when we get down to the, the I'm sorry, the, uh, the framework submissions, I don't think it's necessary to, re to uh, repeat those. They're, they're elsewhere in attached to the minutes. So just to relieve you of some uh, responsibility there. OK, town reports. We'll start with the town of Air. Mr. Chair, just briefly, the Town of Ayers uh, local committee uh, continues to meet uh, at their last meeting. Uh, they had a long discussion in review of sort of municipal management services if Air was to assume jurisdiction of the historic boundary. Uh, what would be of specific of interest and importance to Air in terms of municipal management services? And the next meeting of that committee, they're going to uh, meet with the schools, uh, the superintendent from the Air Shirley Regional School District to look at it through the school lens. And that will have completed after the schools most of all of the departments. So the committee is beginning to talk about shaping their sort of local report or recommendation uh, to the select board. But there's still, you know, a few meetings before they're there. But moving forward. Good. Any uh, activity with respect to replacing? Uh... No. The third, putting in a third member on. Okay. Okay. Uh, Town of Harvard. Uh, I will give the report. The last at our last meeting, Representative Cena came to our meeting, uh, and there was a general discussion, uh, questions and answers, and uh, in pledged his uh, continued su support for the jurisdiction process uh, and uh, help to the committee. Uh, in particular, we have been trying to get the agency budget from mass development for literally two years. Uh, Representative Cena was able to get that budget to us, uh, and I will make it available to everybody in the committee. It's a 44-page document, uh, and uh, within the 44 pages is every revenue source, and expense associated with the Devons project. Uh, and uh, I've begun to do some work extracting it. And Jim uh, Geller has also uh, taken a, a stab at it and, and be very, very helpful in identifying uh, Devons uh, revenue sources and expenses. Uh, and so it's a very concise uh, summary of uh, financial information that will be very helpful, I think, to this committee uh, going forward. Uh, and uh, again, I, I will share that. And, fi and finally, uh, although she wasn't able to attend uh, last week's meeting, a school committee member, Katie Covino, uh, 
was officially in, uh, joined uh, uh, the Devons, the Harvard Devons Jurisdiction Committee. Uh, that's the report. Rich, is there anything else from Harvard that needs to be? No. <clears throat> okay, Tom or Shirley? Um, <clears throat> yeah, well, obviously, as we're um, well aware, uh, select board member uh, Hildebrandt um, has joined, and this is the first time in, in a long time that we've had a full, um, you know, kind of a full representation on, on this committee. Um, so I, I feel as though we made some progress there. Uh, other than that, there hasn't been uh, too much progress. The last two select board meetings, uh, we did once again advertise uh, for a local committee. Um, there's been a few people that have reached out to get a little bit more information about what it is, but no one that is yet um, committed. Uh, so we, we are having, you know, that, that challenge of um, populating the committee, but I'm, I'm hoping um, that we're able to do so at some point in the near future. So. Yeah. Very good. Uh, Devon's representative, John Catter. Um, well, thank you, Mr. Chair. No major uh, updates. Uh, we do have elections coming up in December for the uh, DAC, which is the Educational Committee that interacts with um, Harvard. I think there are a couple of seats that are up for election, and I would imagine that those those candidates will be make themselves known to the community probably within the next few weeks, and they have to register them for mass development. No open seats in the Devon's committee. Um, other than that, I see here on the agenda, we're going to be talking about the economic uh, bill update, and I don't know whether any of you have seen the abstract, but we are particularly pleased that um, the Devons Committee has been reinserted into the verbiage, huh? as well as the deck. Uh, and um, we, we thank uh, Senator Eldridge, Rep. Senna, and Senator Cronin for their advocacy here, and, and in particular, Harvard, who offered us a spot in case this didn't transpire, but we're, we're very pleased that this, that this happened. That's it. Thank you. Uh, Devon's Enterprise Commission. Uh, other than the uh, matrix uh, for public works discussion, which we'll get onto in a future agenda, uh, we discussed that with the commission, uh, spoke with our public works director as well, too. Other than that, I don't think we have any update. Uh, unless you have anything else to add, Bill? No, no that's it. Okay. Any progress? I asked this every meeting. Any progress on the alternate member from Harvard? Uh, hopefully, knock on wood, again, uh, Senator Eldridge, uh, with his support, um, we have gotten confirmation from the director of uh, appointments for the, for the governor uh, that they are making headway. This is so Carl? For, for Carl, uh, for a number of other appointments and sure. appointments that we have as well. Okay. So the Devon's Enterprise Commission is short one member. Mm -hmm. Uh, and his name is before the will be before the governor for we're short a couple um, oh, really a regional um, as well as uh, an alternate and a Harvard rep. Okay. Yeah, we're particularly cons uh, interested in the Harvard rep. I think Carl is very anxious to uh, join this committee if, if the Enterprise Commission chooses to do that. So yeah, he's been a great uh, you know he's attended every meeting. Yeah. Uh, he's participating, so we just need to get him appointed. Right. So. Right, and hope and hope did hope he doesn't move to Shirley and right. join. <laughs> okay, uh, that's it. Now on to old business, the one-stop grant application. Robert, we, when's the money coming? <laughs> when, when's uh, the check in the mail? <laughs> check what is in my car. Um, so on, on the on the one-stop grant application. So as everybody is aware, we did or received that grant. That grant is, the use of that is to be decided by the framework committee. The town of Air is the administrative grant sponsor. So when you see the letter or any reference to the town of Air, that's just for administrative purposes. Want to stress that this framework committee will. Only this committee. That's only right. this committee will decide um, the scope and use of those funds. They will become available. The state wants to start contracting in January of 2025. So as this group is aware from our last meeting um, they authorized uh, the chair to create a working group to begin to shape out some ideas and suggestions for this whole group here as to what we want to use those funds for um, so the working group has representatives from all of the stakeholders um, victor um, was also uh, involved 
uh, Dan Nason from Harvard, uh, myself from AIR, Brian from Shirley, uh, Neil from The Deck, John and, and Jim Geller um, have been involved. We've had two meetings since the last framework meeting. We met in Shirley uh, at our first meeting and we met in AIR. If you'll recall from the last framework meeting, uh, when the chair asked sort of around the table as sort of just a general conceptual consensus of looking at a financial dimension to all of this. So the challenge we have is we have $320,000 to study um, an aspect of Devin's disposition. But I think as we can all agree here, and we've talked about as the work group, um, the reality is that we're not going to be able to do everything with that funding. So the issue was brought up at our first meeting to look at the RFBI that we had originally um, issued. And as this committee will call, when we did the RFBI, it was to look at the entire universe of issues um, with Devin's disposition. Also assuming that money was no object at that time. As you recall, the last study effort was several million, I believe, um, that was invested in that. So the good news is we did get the grant and we finally have some funding to do something. And you'll also recall when we issued the RFEI, we did not get any responses. I think part of that was there was no funding attached to that, but it was a good effort to get that out there. And what I raised and others at our first subgroup meeting, the concern is we, unfortunately, if we just reissue the RFEI as is, the fear is we won't get responses because there's not enough funding to cover that full scope of issues to be studied. So the challenge that we have, both the framework and the working group, is to come up with a meaningful request for proposal that could secure professional consulting services that we could at least move forward with a significant piece of the puzzle. Want to stress not the whole, the whole pie, Senator Eldridge, uh, the Secretary of Economic and Community Development, or they've changed the name when we met with them, do understand for what it's worth that the 320000 is not intended to study the whole issue. So that's, we're going to have to make some choices on that. So we have had two meetings where we've had, and I'll turn it over to, to Victor to probably best uh, give the synopsis, we've had two really good discussions about looking at the financial dimension of disposition scenarios with the understanding that it is not the only issue. It is not, um, there are other, other issues that need to be looked at and also that we're really looking at the first steps of that of sort of a data collection um, first piece of it. But, you probably can boil it down better than I. We have not come to a formal recommendation yet. We're going to have another meeting, but we did want to give this group an update. And maybe after Victor's synopsis, there may be some other uh, questions or input um, on that. Right. I think Robert's covered it all. I think that the, the charge is to take this money and to create something very usable uh, the committee has kind of focused on data collection to try to develop something that uh, is useful to all the stakeholders, mm -hmm. recognizing that we really can't do a deep dive as the REFI suggested. Uh, and, and the reason for that, again, so it, fundamentally, so it will be uh, a document that, that, that can be used, but also to demonstrate to funding sources that we're, it's a serious business and we, we're really putting forth a solid effort uh, that uh, ought to be evidence that more funds would be well spent uh, on the effort. So we will come back to you with a, uh, hopefully with a really solid report to the committee uh, on where to proceed. Uh, and uh, then I think once, once we essentially agree on the scope of services, then we have to try to figure out exactly how we incorporate it into a larger RFP. Uh, an RFP that will be more effective than the RFEI was. Um, so any questions for Robert or I? Yeah, just so we're not going to, perfectly fine, we're not going to, um, 
Jim had put together a, a document for review, but that's going to happen at our next meeting. We're not going to dive into the, the his work so far, but that's going to happen in the next yes. meeting. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. yeah. I know Jim uh, was very involved at the last meeting, both meetings, and then he has submitted something. Okay. Good. I, we feel we need I'm one more ready. meeting yeah. to yeah. to fully shape it. We we'll come back for December, and I think we'll be in good shape okay. for this group to then weigh in and figure out how we want to. Proceed. Yep. All right. Neil. Um, as part of that discussion, I had raised uh, the issue, and I think it's more of an issue for the entire group, which was to have we sent anything formally into mass development to request them to come back to the table now that the, the funding has been awarded? Well, I used to formally request mass development attend our meetings on a regular basis for over a year. Right. Uh, and never got a response. So I'm, I'm just thinking with the new interim CEO, um, with this funding, uh, it may be worth the, the committee considering a formal request to re-engage with mass development as part of this process. I think it's essential we have them at the table. Um, you know, and, and it's been a little while since, I mean, last we had Dan uh, O'Connell in um, who, you know, seemed supportive of the work of the, the committee. Uh, they were very uh, non-committal in terms of whether or not they would come back to the table if the funding was, was it, uh, received. Now that the funding has been received, I think it'd be worth a, a formal request for them to come back to the table again, to their new interim CEO, at least. Comments? Robert? Victor, um, <coughs> Neil, we are on the same page, and if anybody could get them here, I would be first there. Of course, I'm the master of crickets and mass development. <laughs> if you do, the crickets would continue to try to get them here. So yeah. Um, so I thought about, I, I saw what you had wrote on that, and this is what I would propose. When O'Connell, uh, Mr. O'Connell was here, if I recall correctly, what they said was not the issue of the funding as much as that when the economic bill passed, the working group was going to be formed, yes. and that's how they were going to um, interact with us. Now, I don't necessarily agree with this. I feel for the last three years, as I know you do, I think, Victor, I think this whole group for over the last three years wish they would come. Well, and I'm not opposed. I mean, we, we're masters at sending letters. We could send another request. But, um, and I had mentioned this to Victor in talking with him recently. The way I see it is they, they, they always have an open invitation to come here. We got the grant through the support of Senator Eldridge, and Rep. Senna, and Senator Cronin in our efforts and with no help from mass development. So to have them now jump in at this point in the game and weigh in on how we're going to use the money, I think is a little bit problematic. So what I would maybe propose, I mean, we can send another letter, ask them to come. I think I can tell you what the answer is going to be. But I do think this. I think when we issue the bona fide request for proposal and we have the scope that this framework committee is comfortable with that defines a specific study lens and has the funding behind it and has been professionalized, I think that is the point in which we have leverage to get mass development to participate because we'll also have a reason because we'll need a bunch of that information. So, I mean, I'm not opposed if we want to send another, uh, another request, but I think the way we get them back to the table is we now have an opportunity to have something to really drive the bus to get their attention, number one. And number two, I do agree with John, with the Devons Committee reinstated in the bill, hopefully this bill passes and that working group uh, gets up and going. But if I was a betting man, I don't think mass development is going to come back. And, and I'm not saying they are going to come yeah, back. I'm yeah. just saying, you know, yeah. throw it out there as, as a for, another formal invitation. I think the, you know, the economic development bill aside, that's, that's a whole other issue. Mm -hmm. um, you know, beyond jurisdiction, because that's an immediate thing, right? It's not looking at the future jurisdiction. Um, so I think it's worth it. I'd love to hear what other committee members think. Um, 
in terms of just sending an, another formal invite um, and announcing that we have the grant. I know they already know we have the grant money, but. Um, I agree. I, I agree. There's, there's nothing lost in doing it. And we continue to hold the kind of the moral upper hand by continuing to invite them. So we don't give them an opportunity to say, oh, well, we weren't invited. We showed up in June and then we never heard from you again. Janice? Well, I mean, I don't, I sent them a letter, but it, it'll be crooked. But what's disturbing is the idea is that we know they already know that we've gotten the money from the grant, you know, so, and they know that they're supposed to be a part of this committee. Why haven't they like said, you know, hey, real sorry, we've been kind of busy. We heard congratulations and when's the next meeting? You know, so again, I'm not opposed to sending a letter, but at some point in time, we got to look at them and going, seriously, what's wrong with you people? And, and why aren't you like stepping up also? So, um, but I have no problems with sending a letter. I mean, if we could get them back to the table, that's great. John? I think Young has a legitimate uh, uh, approach here. I think perhaps the best course here is to see what happens tomorrow with this bill. And then uh, ultimately, we may be able to revisit it at the next meeting. Yeah. And my two cents, it was really clear to me that when they, when Dan O'Connell and Meg came to this meeting, that they were going to be laser focused uh, on this bill and producing more housing at Devon's. My fear, if they got involved in this process, that they would be inclined to want to steer this money towards what the bill provides for uh, this working group on housing, uh, and they would be, I think, tempted to steer the work of this committee to a housing focus. Uh, and that's a piece of, of what we want to accomplish here, but uh, I don't think it rises to the top of the pile. Just my view. Brian? I mean, so the challenge is I was not present for a couple months um, in between not being a select board member and, and being a town administrator, so I, I kind of missed their point, you know, uh, Mass Development's point of view when you when you had met with them. Um, I do think it's imperative that they come back at some point, um, you know, but I also do agree with if, you know, if we're able to identify, you know, what, you know, we've, once we've, you know, officially secured the funding and identify where we're going to utilize it, um, you know, I don't anticipate that to be too far down the road. And I think, you know, once that is complete, um, it would still be, you know, somewhat in the, you know, near future that we could then ask them if they'd like to rejoin and, and see what they say. So, uh, Robert? Oh. Just to build off the discussion, which is very good, what if we, for the next meeting, so a couple things, hope, as John mentioned, unfortunately it's tomorrow, hopefully there's some action. What if for the next meeting, because I mean, what's a few more weeks at this point, we, if we send a specific letter inviting them back that has specific, I'm going to use the term tasks for them, and this is what I'm getting at. If we wait one more month, I think we'd have two pieces, two things in place that we could ask them. One is we will have this funded RFP that's going out that may have a specific data collection component that we can specifically reference in the letter and ask them, use that as part of it to get them reengaged is number one. And number two is assuming that the economic development bill passes, which they were extremely confident about last summer, and there was a delay. So I'm hoping it passes too with this committee in it. That would be the second piece is how um, that group, the granted it's going to be focused a lot on housing, that working group, how that interfaces with us. So in addition to our standard letter of asking them to come back, I think in another month we'd have two substantive hooks, for lack of a better word, and see what they say then. But I think we have to... I it think makes we, sense to me. I, yeah. I just think we, you know, yep. as, as Rich said, I think we've got to, someone's got to be the bigger... Right. Yeah. Yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and I person think, here and uh, continue to engage with them despite crickets. Um, 
And to, you know, to Victor's concern about them steering the ship in the wrong direction, you know, this is a, you know, a communal process here and no one person is steering this ship. Um, it's a, it's a, you know, consensus driven process. So I wouldn't have that same fear. I don't think, um, I think everybody here, you know, has their own opinions, but, um, I wouldn't have that same concern. I, I agree with Neil. They wouldn't be able to run the ship. Because we'd be looking at him going, you're rudderless. <laughs> I think uh, Robert's uh, idea is a good one. And I think that if we wait until we have agreement here on the broad scope of how we want to spend this tranche of funding, mm -hmm. I think it, it, it segues. We, we can't accomplish anything without mass development support. The information that the consultants will need is held by mass development, so we need their support. So I think Some it. Some of what we need is held by mass development. There's a lot of other sources. Mm -hmm. and, it's true. Uh, right. They they play a, a vital <laughs> a, a role. A very vital role. Yes, correct. correct. Yeah, agreed. So that would be a very. It would. It seems to me it would flow that this is we're this is what we've decided to do with this money. We'd like you to to rejoin the committee. To help us accomplish this, then it's it's a really clear message. Uh, and um, it, it's clear what we want them to do. We're not just sitting here looking for ways to spend the money and looking for mass development to give us some guidance on it. Janice? I think it would be a good idea is for the next meeting um, that we have, like, in the packet, even a draft of all the points or tasks that we want in that letter um, so that when we come into the next meeting, you know, we'll be able to like, boom, here's, here's some of what's already been, you know, discussed as far as should be in that invite back to them. Okay. Okay. Any further discussion? We'll keep this on the agenda. Mm -hmm. Yes. Good. Oh, I only have them up because I haven't learned the new system. And when we go to the next agenda item where we're putting in the uh, um, matrix, it'll be the next page. That's only why it's up. All right. Also, does the current system have the capacity to put uh, us up on the screen? I don't think it's there yet, is it? Yeah, we're oh, it up is. on the screen. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, and then, so yeah, that's for you, that's for them, and that's for, well, them, because we never see it. <laughs> okay. Brand uh, new system. Moving right along. Uh, response, now we've already done the introduction, so next item, under new businesses, response to question seven, public works. Let's start with the Enterprise Commission, your submission. Uh, okay, thank you, Mr. Oh. Chair. You went out of order. Okay. <laughs> You went out of order the packet, so you go ahead, Neil. I'll get happy, to it. Happy to start. I will make this brief. Um, so I did speak with our public works director to kind of get an overview of what uh, what activities they currently do under status quo. Um, uh, public stormwater management system maintenance. Uh, they manage over 22 miles of road in Devons, over 500 acres of grounds. Um, that's including over 70 acres of recreational fields. Uh, one thing I didn't include in this update is that they have a staff of 14 uh, with two summer interns. And I think I had mentioned this to you before, Victor, but I think it's important that we continue to populate with current staffing levels for all of these matrix, item, matrix items. And I'll go back and I'll add, um, you know, employee, current employee levels where I can um, because it's important for the, the towns to see and understand what currently goes into the level of service on Devons. And, you know, we've talked about this in the past about wanting to ensure we maintain the levels of service in Devons for what, whatever scenario or disposition happens. Um, so I think it's important that we understand what goes into it right now. So um, other things Public Works does, all the right of way maintenance, snow removal, typical DPW activities, street replacement management. Um, we have a recycling drop-off center in Devons, a free recycling drop-off, uh, household hazardous waste and electronic disposal. All of that is, uh, is, is housed at our, our DPW. Uh, they take care of um, animal control as well. 
and as I mentioned, they oversee the recreation department. Uh, they also service all the, the fleets of vehicles uh, that are used to operate and maintain Devons. Okay. Very good. Any questions for Neil? Uh, Devons. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, just to add to Neil's comprehensive report there, I think the um, residents and businesses uh, on Devons are dependent on and expect to continue the level of service. Ryan with BMS, the level of service required. Uh, we have Little Leaf Farms. It is probably one of the single biggest um, um, users of power on Devons. Uh, so that's a, a, a thing that the DPW is somewhat involved with. If backing up on, on Neil's, the DPW maintains 44 lane miles of roads, serves over 100 businesses to include BMS, um, significant trucking needs, and now pulses 10,000 employees uh, on a daily basis in and out of Devons, uh, which as you know, pounds the roads and has a lot of um, maintenance required by the DPW. Um, our recommendation is to maintain the Devons DPW as is with a continued overarching responsibility for the integration of recreational department function in its entirety and uh, to coordinate a municipal contract with adjacent towns for transfer station services, but pretty much echoing what Neil had to say. Okay, good. Okay, for the uh, new members uh, present, the, uh, the first two presentations you've gotten basically involve keeping Devons intact as a community. The next three uh, involve the, the devolution of Devons back to the three towns uh, from whence uh, it came. They'll we'll start with Shirley. If Shirley were to take back its proportion of Devons, how would you handle public works? Uh, yeah, so um, surely somewhat of a unique uh, scenario. Um, so our current uh, DPW um, is fairly small in size. You know, we have a we have a director. We have three full time and a, a part time um, worker. Uh, so you know, compared to other towns, it's it's fairly small. They do a great job, um, but they would probably um, you know, they would be responsible for um, any additional, um, if, if, the, if the historic boundaries went back to uh, the town of Shirley, uh, they would be responsible for those areas. What's unique about Shirley is they already do maintain those. Uh, so I, I do anticipate that we, there would have to be an assessment of whether there would be an increase in personnel, whether it be an increase in capital or machinery and equipment. Um, however, uh, right now, the police station, the town offices, and the library uh, sit on um, essentially Devon's lands. However, under the current agreement, uh, the Shirley D DPW does already maintain those buildings and the property and roads there. Uh, additionally, the Air Shirley um, Regional Middle School is also adjacent to that property, um, and that is taken care of through uh, the Air Shirley Regional School agreement. Uh, so a majority of the property or, or, or land uh, that we would be responsible for, the town of Shirley, as small as the DPW already is, is already taking care of those. So it would just be an assessment of is there additional personnel needed, um, you know, maybe add a staff member, maybe add a, a certain amount of equipment. But, so. Okay. Uh, the town of Harvard, the report from the DPW director in Harvard, he has a high a uh, degree of confidence uh, that his department, in, in, in combination with the DPW uh, employees and facilities on Devons, would do a, a fine job. Uh, particularly impressed, of course, with the DPW facility itself, which is fairly new. Uh, the only complication there is the DPW facility uh, on Devons is on air land and not on Harvard land. So. Uh, the only way that that would uh, become usable to the town of Harvard is by entering into some sort of intermunicipal agreement between the town of Ayr and the town of Harvard. Yeah, we'll, we'll think about it. We'll think about it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no guarantees, but uh, so he, and he envisions uh, that there would be a director with two assistants and two foremen that would similar to uh, the configuration for the fire department that it, that it wouldn't. That there would be combi com combination and sharing of equipment and so on, but basically treated as two separate uh, work areas. Um, and uh, and then finally, the, his uh, input uh, that I had some assistance with is right now, 
the uh, Devon's DPW, as uh, Neil has pointed out, uh, takes care of a, a lot of land and buildings. And buildings, by and large, are the property of mass development. And mass development leases out some of those buildings uh, and otherwise maintains them. Over the long run, those buildings would be liquidated. When the redevelopment project is over, mass development would sell those buildings off the proceeds would go into the Devon's fund. So that's a function that right now falls to Devon's DPW that they would no longer uh, be responsible for that. Uh, and in terms of open space and, and parkland, and that, that, uh, there's some flexibility there. And uh, I don't know if, if some of that open space and particularly land use for recreational purposes wouldn't devolve to a state agency to, to maintain that. Uh, so those are issues that are that are unresolved that, that do have a bearing on uh, the DPW function uh, that, that Harvard would be undertaking. Uh, finally, air. Okay, so um, for the town of air, um, in terms of the roads increased of the scope um, one of the things we would want to do is check with the state to understand um, how this would change the Chapter 90 uh, formula. Uh, in terms of snow plowing, uh, street sweeping, line paint, painting, asset management, there would be um, increases to those, but it's the feeling of the DPW director that they're within, um, within the capacity um, of, of the town within reason. Um, the stormwater uh, scope, again, would increase the, the catch basing, um, cleaning, uh, asset management, um, and then talks about in our matrix um, the MS4 uh, stormwater permitting. Uh, how would that all play out? Um, DPW permitting, um, there'd be an increase in scope, whether it's road opening permits, driveway trench, stormwater uh, transfer station, water and sewer. Um, service. Uh, so just looking conceptually to be increase on permitting. Um, the DPW director, our DPW director also flagged the issue, any unexploded ordinance permitting or tracking, asked the question of any, you know, interactions, you know, with the Army on that. And then the issue of um, Devon's uh, utilities uh, is raised in our matrix as well, as far as um, organizing all of that out in terms of the providers for electricity, gas, um, the electric plant, um, water, wastewater, and so forth. And there's a wastewater plant up there. We have wastewater plant. There's currently an uh, intermunicipal agreement uh, between uh, Mass Development, Devons, and us as far as flow for waste uh, water. Um, we'd have to look at, at what this would mean to that. So there are a lot of variables to look at, but from our DPW director's perspective, within the scope of, of feasibility to be done. Okay. Very good. Again, for the benefit of new members, uh, this is this effort that each of the stakeholders is undertaking is intended to be a first pass uh, to putting information out there, not by any means a, a final decision. Uh, we divided up the future options of Devons into five different areas. The three towns resuming jurisdiction, the status quo, which Neil spoke about, and Devons becoming a town, uh, which is uh, what, what uh, John uh, represented. So again, this is information that hopefully will be a benefit down the road to a consultant and, and to each other to as we uh, gain more knowledge and experience with respect to exactly what uh, Devons has become. Okay, any uh, questions for any of the stakeholders? I guess I have a question. It kind of gets back to the beginning about, about mass development not showing up. Is it not in their best interest not to show up? Well, they, well that, the reason they gave is that this effort is premature. Uh, the legislation says on or before 2030, a plan will be prepared. And Mass Development has taken that literally. And the, they've literally said, we'll see you in 2029. To be fair, it also depends on who's in charge. Because when this committee started, Mass Development was with us. 
um, you know, at the meetings and, and in the discussions and everything. Uh, COVID hit, changing, uh, you know, personnel, and that's where it all went. So I do think it also depends on who's in charge over there. And it was mass development that suggested we create this committee. So I just had one more question. I heard that the premise is to keep Devon's kind of like the way it is from a landscape and then clean streets program. So use the Bristol Myers as an example. Did they purchase the land or yes. did they lease it? Purchase. Okay. Is there any promise from mass development or anybody saying that the environment will always stay the same and because people come and go in life, you know, like sometimes uh, DPW is a little short-handed, sometimes not, so things don't always look the same yeah. over a period of time. So is there any implied Yeah, Ryan may have some input there, but I, I was involved in negotiating the land disposition agreement, and most of the things focused on in that agreement uh, dealt with uh, the infrastructure, yeah. water, power, sewage, water in particular. Uh, Neil? I was just going to add, too, there are existing bylaws, rules, and regulations that they need to abide with so they can continue to grow. They're, they're not a static company that's just what, what they have now is what they're going to have. They're allowed to grow and develop within the, the reuse plan bylaws and rules and regulations that, are, that govern the redevelopment of Devons. Okay, and would that end those bylaws that Devon just faded away? That all it, it all has to be decided as part of the disposition process. If if Devons continued on as Devons, yeah. those bylaws, rules, and regulations would stay. Would they stay in the same format? I don't know. It, it all depends what happens with this process. But these are all things that have to be considered as part of this disposition discussion. How would things happen if Devons continues as it is? If it becomes its own town, or if it reverts back to the communities? So that's all part of this discussion. That's it for now. I assure you. Uh, no, it's quite all right. right. Uh, it's awesome. A lot of time I'll spend time on my own as well to uh, get it uh, to speed and educate. All right, very good. Okay, so now, uh, next time, it is unified permitting. How each of the five stakeholders would deal with unified permitting upon disposition. Just before anyone asks, I don't know how to close that screen. <laughs> it's going to stay there until I've learned how to. <laughs> okay, we've, all, we've talked about the working group. Uh, the economic development bill uh, did find its way out of committee, and mm -hmm. according to uh, Dan Cena, this, he, his expectation is that the legislature will vote on it tomorrow. So I assume that we'll have a bill before the end of the month. And and well, they've made no uh, no substantive changes to the language that we've seen in the past. Mr. Chairman, Brian had his hand up for quite some time during the previous discussion. My apologies. My person walked away, and I don't know the new system, Max. Yes. Who raised their hand? I don't know how to. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Do you want to get on the economic development trail? Because I know that's important for us all. But did have a quick question. Being new here, um, is there a map, or, or does anyone in the room know what uh, municipality that our facility fell into prior to <laughs> becoming what it is? I'm just curious. Um, there. Thank you. Yes, there is a map. And you're in Harvard. <laughs> I figured you knew based on the information you've been sharing this call, so I'm glad I asked. Thank you. Yeah, we'll send you a map. I was going to say, Ryan, I can share a map, a yeah. link to a, a map with you that shows where you are, and feel free to reach out with any questions. Thanks all. And also, if you check the deed, it's really clear on the deed where your, your property is located. Um, okay. Uh, public comment. Okay. Yes. My name is Cindy Carter. I'm, I've been a resident of Devon's now for 12 years. Never been involved in any kind of government at all. I have been on Devon's for me. But, um, and no offense to, to Ryan, but I 
would ideally be nice if there was somebody representing more physically it, in Massachusetts as opposed to New Jersey. We have just a comment. Mm -hmm. I see as a resident, not as a committee member. Okay, so noted. Uh, any other comments? Okay, uh, any additional items for our next agenda? Okay, is there a motion to adjourn? Second. Uh, all those in favor of the motion to adjourn say aye. 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 Those opposed say nay. Without objection, we are adjourned.